Um, so hopefully I will eventually get closer to being able to speak to her. But this piece is to my mother whose voice anchors deep. When I was 12 and saw you cry, I hid in my room until it was safe to come out. When I was 15 and saw you cry, I thought you deserved it and ignored you. When I was 17 and saw you cry, I stayed in the room but felt awkward. When I was 20 and saw you cry, I'd sit next to you and wonder how long it would take this time. When I was 23 and saw you cry, I'd pat your shoulder and sit next to you, thinking of what to say but not saying anything because nothing sounded right. Now I'm 25 and when I see you cry, I sit next to you. Sometimes I lean on your shoulders, sometimes I hug you to me, sometimes I hold your hand, but mostly I tell you it's okay, that they are men and that's how men are and for you to not be sad, to not think too much. Once I cried with you, tears between mother and daughter, between woman and woman. It was unexpected and I realized how much empathy hurts. I think of my brothers who have grown on the back of a woman who has always bended because she was taught to bend. I think of my father who is perhaps relieved in the belief that such a woman would never stand upright and walk away. And I think of my sister who at the age of 18 has said she will never marry if this is what to be a married woman is. Love is not worth it, she has said. Conviction in her voice, a surrender in her breath. I have fallen in love, mother, and I am scared. So stand tall, mother, stand tall. I need you to stand tall and upright, if not for you, then for me. To have grown by your side, to have been raised on your back and your hands and your tears, I have witnessed this half of your life just as you have borne witness to the whole of mine. When I hear paternal grandma say that it is your fault if you cannot get your husband to do what you ask, when I hear maternal grandma say that you must bear with it, that you must endure, all I hear is that it's you, 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 and the word compromise means that only you must be the one to give way. Our lives as women need not revolve around a man. Feminism has shown me that, but the roots of patriarchy are deep and it takes communal strength to untangle those roots to unlearn these wisdoms of generations that have been based upon sacrifice. You have taught me many things, and I recognize them now as your love for me and your wish for me to live well and be happy. But these lessons you pass on to me are lessons of submissions, lessons of endurance, lessons of self-sacrifice. Such are the methods you have used in your own lives, and such are the methods that have been taught and given to you by others. We must submit, we must endure, we must sacrifice ourselves because ourselves do not belong only to us. We start as a daughter, a sister, a woman who bears the surname of our fathers, and one day we will be a wife, a daughter-in-law, a sister-in-law, a mother to children who will bear the surname of our husband. Each title is nuanced with connections and responsibilities. We are born from roots of legacies and will birth new ones. Submit, endure, sacrifice, for your life is never just your own. Under such weight, who can stand tall? I have fallen in love, mother, and I'm scared. Scared because the man I love is not one I am supposed to love. He is older, he is not Hmong. These roots I have grown from and these roots that have nourished me, will they allow me to love such a man whose roots I have been warned not to mix with at all? You have told me many times that marriage is never just about love, that even love is not about love. The heart must not guide us in these decisions because when we women let our hearts lead, it leads us towards men we should not love. Men who will treat us the way they chew sugar cane, drain our sweetness in their tongues, then spit us out when we are dry. We must love correctly. Stand tall, mother, stand tall. I need you to stand tall for me. Love is not worth it, my sister said. In response to a story I wrote about family, a male colleague commented that he found it unsettling how love is used as a means of control. I was shocked and thought, when has love not been about control? Who I can love, who I should love, the lessons you have taught me about men, the messages I have heard from movies, from books, from the mouths of other women, and even from the mouths of men themselves, they all caution me against men. I must be careful, I must be cautious. 
I am woman and I can be tainted, I can be ruined, my life at the mercy of the emotions of the men I encounter. My next door neighbor, my classmates, my coworker, will these men honor and be kind or will they use me? My father, my brothers, my grandfathers, my uncles, will these men uphold and protect me or will they leave me? And in, in an, and in a community where the roots are patriarchy not into everything, a strong woman will be forced to bend, to forever bend, because her life was never made to be her own. So stand tall then, mother, stand tall with me. In this crazy thing called life where guarantees do not exist and the roots of suppression cannot be dug out in one generation, stand with me so that we may both lean on each other. So that what you cannot do, I can, and what I cannot do, we will endeavor to. Stand with me, mother, because if you continue to bend, then when I follow my heart, when I must shake these roots straight, and when I must prune those that may endanger me to rot, then I fear you will fall. And I fear what love there is between us will turn to hate, to shame, to regret, for I cannot continue to bend with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.